So hi everyone, um, welcome to Quarantine uh, with Essentially Sports. Today we are joined by the Danish number one and the 18-year-old prodigy who's been having a wonderful season uh, this year. Um, hello, Holger. Uh, hello. Thanks for taking the time out to join us. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Yeah. So, um, so how are you doing? Uh, where are you right now? Are you are you on a vacation or are you still you know enjoying the off season or training or what's up with you right now? Yeah, I mean, I've, I'm doing my preseason now, preparing for the for the next year. So I've had a lot of practices here this week. Actually, today is my off day, so <laughs> I'm enjoying it. But uh, you know, it's been uh, it's been a lot of work, and still have a lot of work to do. So, um, so I'm I'm excited for next year, and have been practicing with some great players here, and uh, working on my physical ability. So I'll be well prepared for for the Australian Open next year. Uh, so, have you decided on which of the tournaments you'll be playing before the Australian Open, or uh, have you not decided? Uh, I haven't really decided yet. Depends which one I get closest to get into in the main draw. I'm, I'm currently, I'm seven out of Adelaide and eight or something out of Melbourne. So, you know, I think it might be Adelaide, but we'll see. And uh, you know, right now my goal is just to be as well as prepared for for the Australian Open as possible because that that's the goal there to do well. Brilliant. Um, uh, even before I get into the awesome season that you've had this year, uh, uh, I'd like to take it back a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, how you got into tennis? Uh, would you let, uh, just give us a little bit of uh, uh, background there as to why you chose tennis at such a young age and uh, in a country, you know, where uh, really you didn't have any players to follow, you know, uh, growing up? So. Yeah, I mean, uh, I started when I was six years old and uh, my sister, she started also playing tennis. So I came to try it and I thought it was a lovely sport as I do now. So, uh, you know, I've always enjoyed playing and still do, thankfully. So, so it's for me, it's just the best sport. And, uh, you know, I've always lived in Denmark and uh, been practicing there. And, uh, you know, it's Dan Denmark is not a big, you know, tennis country or anything. We had Vashniagi, but then otherwise we have, we have no tradition or nothing in Denmark, uh, you know, with tennis. So I, from a young age, I traveled a lot, traveled to play a lot of tournaments, you know, from in Italy, France, whatever, to, to compete against the guests, best guys, even in my age or in age over. So, so that's uh, probably, uh, you know, very helpful for me because I earned a lot of experience already back then and, and can mm -hmm. also use it now because nothing is really new to me because mm -hmm. I've been playing all the slams, even though it's only one time as a senior, it's, it's still like, you know, mm -hmm. you've been there, try to be in the environment. So it's, it's a great feeling. Amazing. And how has the experience been uh, training at Mortaglu Academy? You know, it's been uh, a few months now that you've been training there. So uh, uh, meeting up with the big names such as, you know, uh, Sitsipas, you know, watching Serena Williams as well train there. So how, how has the experience overall been there? Yeah, I think it's it's the best academy in the world, if I should say. I think we have all the facilities here. We have uh, pretty good weather as well now, even though it's, it's winter here. So... So for me, it's the perfect place and I feel always very welcome when I'm coming here. And, uh, you know, it's there's really good players in the off season, both here and in Monaco. So uh, we can go back and forth to practice with, with some of the guys here, like uh, Medvedev, Felix, these top 10 guys. So it's uh, for me, it's it's the perfect place to be for practice. I mean, I can't ask for more. You have everything here. So that's uh, wonderful. Amazing. Um, of course, you've also practiced with the big names uh, at the ATP Tour Finals. Uh, you've also uh, taken a set off of Novak Djokovic this year. Um, uh, how did that uh, experience, you know, uh, inculcate into your uh, uh, new 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 routines? I would say, as to uh, you know, did you how much did you learn from that uh, experience playing in front of such a huge crowd, uh, one of the biggest stages in the world, and uh, how were your nerves there uh, on that day against Djokovic? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I was obviously very nervous, you know, I was very excited for what was going to happen because, you know, after I, I qualified for the main draw, I found out in the evening that I was playing him in like four days. So I had a lot of time to think about it and prepare myself. And, and it was good and bad in a way, because then I had too much time of thinking, but, you know, obviously I had time to also mentally prepare myself for what was going to happen. And I think, you know, Obviously, in the beginning, a bit of nerves, but I think it was good tennis from both, actually, even though the score was 6-1. And, and then I, I told myself to play more freely and, 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 you know, I played more aggressive, took my chances. And uh, I think already in this in, in this age, as an 18-year-old, to take a set is, is a great achievement and something I could be proud of and, and build on, which I did afterwards. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great to be also, you know, 
to, to also try to compete against these guys in matches, not only in practice, because it really shows what they live a lot, but also, you know, they're not gods. They still, they make mistakes, you know, they take some mm -hmm. weird choices on the court because they're also nervous. They're also human. So, so it was really interesting to play them and inspiring as well. Uh, I'd like to talk more about that human aspect of those uh, giants, you know, um, uh, for, for so long, almost two decades, these three people have uh, dominated the ATP tour and uh, it's been really uh, difficult for the rest of them to uh, topple them. But uh, the kind of mentality that you have been talking about right now that, you know, they make mistakes, they're humans. So what do you think? Uh, when When is this domination of tennis going to end or uh, are you are you guys going to step up this year? <laughs> well, th that's the plan. I mean, I hope so. I hope the young guys will, you know, also me. So I'm telling myself also to to come and take over and and see some new guys up there. We already seen some new guys like Sver, the Medvedev, even though you know they've been on the tour for a while now. But but still, it's it's just great not to see you know Roger Rafa all the time and Novak, uh, even though they're probably the best of our sport. And and you know we still. We miss those matches when they play against each other, but but yeah. still, you know, it's it's good fun also for the audience. I think to have some new blood into it and mm -hmm. and some new energy for sure, and and also, you know, for us, it's it's fun because we're so young and and we've mm -hmm. also you know always looked up to these guys and looked up to those tournaments to play them, and now we're finally here. So it's it's about uh, giving everything you have and uh, you know hopefully hopefully do as well as possible. Amazing. Uh, in a recent interview, you also said that you and uh, uh, Alcaraz are one of the budding rivalries uh, in the in the in the young uh, generation. So, could you talk more a little bit about Alcaraz and how um, how he probably brings the best out of you, maybe sometimes, or pushes you to you know uh, try harder for, for uh, during the practice sessions? Yeah, I mean, I've seen for sure he's been a very very quick, you know, during his uh, you know his like from juniors to seniors, he's been doing that. Amazing if you could say. I mean, he's been uh, he's been doing amazing, and uh, we've obviously played a lot a lot of times against each other, both in juniors and now first time as on the tour. And I think we'll definitely not be the last one. And uh, you know, I think it's as you said, it's good that we can push each other. You know, when I was a junior, I was maybe a little bit better than him. Then he overtook me a little bit, and now so it's 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 good pushing each other. And I think that's important even from a young age. You also have Musetti up there and. We all are, you know, good friends. We practice together. We we're, we're good rivalists in a way. So hopefully that will be the next one, two, and three on the tour. Yeah, it's good to hear. And uh, speaking about your own personal goals, uh, have you got any goals uh, for the next year, or is it just you know short-term goals like you said, you know, looking at Australian Open, or is it have you have you got any big big goals for the next season? Yeah, I mean, kind of both. You know, I have the short-term goals, what I want to achieve, and then I have the you know the, like the overall goal with my coach so what you know ranking goals how many points I need to have blah 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 and and that I mean from this year was obviously top 100 and now I was 103 but it was good enough for for main draw and for me that was what matters the most and and this year it's about you know coming in and playing regularly on the tour and and uh, see if I can you know my goal my personal goal is to win HP 250 before the mm. summer and after that be able to to win at 500 or up so so that that's my goal for this year any particular atp 250 tournament that you're targeting this season um i mean i, I played only a few i mean i played a couple so um i mean i really like the south america swing i think it was great and uh, and also Kitzbühel, i enjoyed and Mets in france and i have pretty good memories from from those tournaments i did pretty well so so it's going to be it's probably going to be, you know, one of the tournaments that, you know, I already know because I've been there and will feel confident in. Amazing to hear that. And of course, you've also won the uh, Roland Garros uh, in, uh, in your juniors. And uh, uh, is, is that your favorite surface? Is clay the surface you prefer to play on? Um, you know, it depends. Like sometimes it's clay, sometimes it's hard court. I don't I, I don't really know. I mean, I've probably done my best results in clay, but still I've been playing so much more in clay than hardcore. So, you know, that's probably why. But, you know, during the hardcore tournaments, I got my first challenger title in hardcore. And um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm best at. So maybe I'm, I would I would probably say myself as, as an all call player. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, your game, uh, a lot of aggressiveness that you showed in the second and third set in Djokovic resembles a lot to the 
uh, style of play that you know Federer comes up with. You you've also said many times that you know you would not you're not afraid to back down from the baseline and you'd like to approach the net whenever it's necessary to. So um, so what kind of a player uh, are you building yourself into? Is it more towards an um, aggressive mentality or is it towards a, a you know a, a baseliner or how's that? Yeah, I think I have I have uh, you know some good strengths in my game already now because I have the aggressiveness in my game, but also I've been you know playing a lot of matches and clay this year, which helped me to been you know to have been grinding through a lot of matches, which is I think also very important to be able to play on the tour with these guys because you can't hit winner on every point against these guys, so it's it's important to to have a bit of both and and what I'm trying to build with my team and my coaches. It's not exactly Roger, but like, you know, something from him, like, you know, stepping in and return, coming forward mm. to the net and, you know, also be solid because that's, you know, something for me is very naturally to play from the baseline and be very solid for both sides. And it's about, you know, building something. I, I have, I would say I have all the shots, but it's just about, you know, trusting them and, and you know, be brave enough to, to come in at the right time. Is there any one of your favorite shots that you would like to, you know, uh, go to whenever, you know, uh, you're, let's say, a break point down, you know, uh, you were hitting a lot of inside out forehands uh, in the Djokovic uh, match as well. So is there a f- favorite go-to shot that you've got? Yeah, I mean, I would say either the forehand inside out or the drop shot down the line I like. And um, yeah. yeah, probably one of these touches is probably one of my best shots. So, And then back and cross, of course, I, I can play that all day, I should say. Oh. Yeah. So um, uh, another thing I would like you, you, you to expand on is the practice sessions you've had with some of the uh, big names. Um, how was it to hit with those players and um, uh, what difference did you feel in your game and their games and how far do you think you are from them? Yeah, I think it's, it's actually fun. It's a good question because now I've been practicing with them last year in the preseason and now this year again. And already there, I feel a huge difference. Like, what player I was back then and what player I am now. Now I feel it's so much smaller thing that that is different. Maybe some physical ability, they're a little bit better, but that's just, you know, that's just about time of work and, and how much work you put in it and then you'll be up there. So I think it's it's very small thing and it's it's really nice for me to see that I'm so close with these these guys in at least in practice now. And I know that, you know, I've been playing so many matches, so matches is not my problem mentally. So it's it's just go out there and, and do the same as you do in practice. Amazing to hear that. Uh, uh, what is what has been the toughest part of tennis for you right now? Has it been the traveling? Has it been the mental side of it? Has it been the physical side of it or the nutrition side? What has been the most difficult part for you? I think uh, in 2020, from transferring from juniors to senior as my first year, it was not easy in the beginning because, you know, all of the guys could, could play, like, you know, even 15Ks, 25Ks, they, they could play. I mean, they, they put the... Uh, plenty of balls in the court not missing mm. playing deep you, you can't really do anything you just have to you know play with them and wait for the for the right one where in in the juniors you kind of got maybe a little bit easier points sometimes and you know I think that that was probably the hardest time mentally to really accept you know it's really tough to to go through them and also coming from the biggest stage in junior to the to the worst stage in in, in senior you know 15 k's in these tournaments it was difficult but you know, it's it's you know you have to go through them because if you don't, you're not gonna go up. So, so even there, then the COVID break came and I was practicing a lot, and and then already after that, I was uh, I was much better prepared for for all the tournaments and went out there and won uh, I don't know five future titles and then was ready for challenges. Yeah, uh, the COVID break has kind of been a blessing in disguise for a lot of players, I would say. Um, uh, how has this season impacted your overall uh, aspirations, I would say, because it has been such a beautiful season for you. You've made the, uh, and, and, and and the attention as well. How have you been dealing with the attention, extra attention, the number of fans that have been, you know, let's say following you on Instagram, let's say. So how has that been? Yeah, I think it's great. I like the support. I like to, as you saw, also in the US Open to, to play with the crowd and, and you know, have the crowd on my side. I think it's it's a good thing that really motivates me as well and, and helps me with my game. And, you know, I think it's uh, I think it's nice to have the fans. I mean, I can't thank them enough because they're mm-hmm. so nice. Even though you lose the match, they're always nice. And it takes, like, keep going, you're doing good and everything. It's really important to have the support because, of course, you have the, the support of your team, but it's really nice to know that you have so many people around who only want you the best. Amazing to hear that. 
All right. Uh, we've uh, we've uh, we've come to the conclusion part of the interview. Anything you would like to say to your fans uh, before you head into the twenty twenty one season? Yeah, I mean, I just want to say that uh, I'm so thankful for all your for your support, and and I really hope that you're going to continue to support me because it means a lot. And uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to play my best tennis and give hundred percent effort in every match I play, and I hope you will enjoy it. Thank you for joining us, Holger Rune. Uh, it was amazing to have you. Uh, see you in Adelaide. Thank you.